Hi, today we're going to take a look at something that is most unusual, very strange little telescope uh, from the 1960s or so, Japanese made we believe, uh, came under different guises, uh, apparently made by the company called Ikao or Ico. Anyway, Ikao, E-I-K-O-W, uh, made several of these telescopes, none of which were a big success for a lot of reasons that I will point out right now. Um, this is a, a, a not really a four inch, uh, about F10 telescope, so it should optically have good quality. It is interesting and strange and quirky, and for that reason, I love this telescope. I have absolute, uh, I'm absolutely fascinated with it. It's charming, interesting, strange. Uh, so, let's take a look at this wonderful telescope. Okay, this should be a real snap to put together. Let's give it a try. Okay, check this out. In order to expand this, you don't just slide it up. First, you have to somehow remove the tail end with some difficulty. And then you slide it completely out like that. And you turn it around. And then, let's see, is it those? Yeah, it's still all right. Oh, but first, one of the tricks I learned is that you have to put this one on first because it won't go on. Talk about convenient. Put them all on and then get to this one last and you can't put it on. Whoa, what fun. Very, very user-friendly. This thing probably weighs at least, I would say, at least a six inch or probably an eight inch telescope would not weigh any more than this and be any more, certainly not be any more complicated to put together and not much less compact. The supposed advantages of this kind of a fold up design seems obvious. But it, boy, they are not there. It just doesn't work out. This is a huge pain. Now, we haven't even talked about collimation yet. Wait till we start talking about that. Because that is going to be a real bear cat with this telescope. So I am not in love with this telescope as far as it's because of its performance or anything like that. Um, nor its convenience, uh, but I do absolutely love its strange quirkiness. Now you have to put this on here. This is also very convenient. There's some bolts that have to go through here, and they have to match up just right with these holes. That can help you if you, you should lose one of these bolts in the dirt. Certainly never find another one quite like it anywhere on the planet. Uh, let's see if I can mm -hmm. Very convenient. And this little part here blocks that slightly, making it just that much more difficult. Uh, 
Uh, you may notice that the counterweight, this is a modern counterweight. I, the counterweight that came with the scope uh, is not sufficient, even at its extreme. It's not heavy. Now, this thing weighs a ton. And this uh, counterweight, you'll see, is pretty much at its maximum to make this work. There's no way of sliding the telescope forward or backward. You have to have it balanced out perfectly or have it help you. All right. All right, there's the scope, and it's sort of balanced now, kind of. Uh, actually, it requires two more things. The eyepiece has to be in the scope, and the little cap, the little cover here, has to be removed. And now, you've achieved perfect balance, right? Yeah, sort of, kind of. There's a couple of other little issues, and that is these guys right here. Put these guys on, and all of a sudden, all your nice plans and, and hopes and ambitions have to go right away. This thing goes on here, and watch this. You'll just want to turn that thing if I take the brake off. Hello! Goodbye! We're gone. Put this thing over here. I don't know, I guess back in the 60s, people were not as demanding for convenience or anything else. All right, let's take a closer look at some of the features of this telescope. Certainly the most distinctive one is this extremely strange uh, construction, a cage back here. And there's the mirror hanging off the end of the cage, like so. And this would seem to be a pretty good idea. As a matter of fact, there are some modern Newtonians that use a similar kind of a design feature. I hope they work better than this. Um, <laughs> you, you saw how difficult it was to put this together. Huge pain. Um, and I, I believe the, the big Dobsonians, they've got some of those kinks worked out because this does not work well at all. Uh, in addition to the big hassle of, uh, you know, stretching this thing out and bolting it on and bolting it off, it's also bound to throw the collimation off. Uh, telescope optics are easily messed up. And I'm not sure with the big daubs how they've corrected that. Maybe it's got they a couple have. of other really interesting and strange features. Uh, the mount, by the way, the mount, I really like the mount. The mount is well made. Uh, it's the locking devices and so forth are good. They work quite well. It's got an extremely interesting slow motion here. This thing here, if you watch this, it's kind of like a tangent arm deal. When I turn this, you can see the telescope moving. It's because there's a, an interesting lever arm connected to this. You can see it moving now, I think. Uh, very charming, very unusual. You don't see many like that. And I really like it. I think it's very, very charming. Quite interesting. They obviously, you know, put some thought into attempting to design a very, um, a, a good telescope. Unfortunately, it didn't, you know, there's a couple of flaws here. Um, and this locking mechanism is pretty good. The balance on the scope is pretty atrocious. Uh, this locking mechanism actually works pretty well. Um, so it's pretty good. Uh, the, the mount, this terrible, terrible mount. The shaky, wobbly legs, it's just horrible. Um, okay, so let's loosen this up. I want to show you the interesting, the interesting spider they've got here. I don't know if we'd be call it a spider in, anymore in this configuration. So let's take a look at this guy here. I'm pretty sure you can probably see that that has curved veins. Um, and this may be one of the first telescopes that ever had that design feature. Here's the finder, a little, uh, I think it's the 6x30 finder. 
cute as it could be. I love this stock. It's very beefy, well made. Back in those days, didn't make many like that. So it's uh, a nice beefy stock. And the optics look to be pretty good. Six by 30 millimeter. So that's quite charming. It, it's a kind of a, a pain that you have to take it off and on all the time and stuff. But putting this thing away and, and storing it and taking it out, I think is not the, the most fun adventure I've ever had. It took me a good 20 minutes to assemble the thing. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of this charming and quirky Aikau telescope from the 1960s. Thank you very much.